Today we're looking at uh, modern physics. Um, modern physics being a period of time and you could, could say a, uh, a bunch of new ideas. If you're talking history, um, you had very loosely, you had like a, if you're considering a timeline, you have a, a sort of a pre-modern uh, and then a, a modern which fits in with all the <clears throat> all the new uh, I think it actually came from architectural kind of designs and things like that but um, so pre-modern was sort of um, from early time right up until um, they started having the scientific revolution and uh, printing press was invented and uh, information started to explode in the world and that's when the modern uh, period came along um, and uh, around the end of the modern period and the beginning of what we term the postmodern period, um, <clears throat> we we uh, moved into this idea of modern physics. So modern physics sort of occurred in, in and around here. Some say we're still in the postmodern period, some in the uh, post postmodern, but uh, uh, it's just a way of looking at history and categorizing it. Classical mechanics occurred. Um, that's Newton's ideas. Um, and, and such of uh, gravitation and energy and motion um, and that was uh, dealing with all of the um, ideas that are at the level where we can easily um, see and measure and deal with them um, but in, with the modern physics this is modern physics here dealing with relativity you can check out the videos we've got on relativity as well um, and quantum mechanics relativity deals with things that are not easily measurable and same with quantum uh, physics, they, they're dealing with, relativity deals with things moving really, really fast, and quantum um, quantum physics deals with things moving really, really small. So on uh, atomic, subatomic, and smaller scale, although quantum physics seems to be making inroads into more molecular things, which is interesting, um, and uh, fast being around the speed of light. So uh, one example of um, modern physics that we want to deal with today is the photoelectric effect. And um, basically, according to um, your classical uh, view, um, you would have expected a whole bunch of uh, results um, when you do the experiments. But what really happens is something else. And this is the realm of um, quantum physics. <coughs> So whenever you see quantum physics, don't get confused and, and shut down your brain about it. Just think it's small stuff. That's easy. Easy to deal with. Small stuff just behaves in a way that we don't uh, obviously see. It doesn't, you know, one thing crashes into another and it doesn't automatically uh, transfer momentum in the same way. Um, but anyway, so photoelectric effect. Um, the, I've got a drawing just down here of a photo cell. Um, now they use semiconductor materials, but... This was um, a, a metal, uh, or this is all in a glass kind of uh, vacuum tube kind of thing. Um, and this thing here is a uh, curved metal plate. So it's a little bit hard to draw 3D with the resolution um, of, of uh, the iPad that allows you to. It's made for fingers, not styluses. Styli, I don't know. But anyway, this metal plate, um, it's large like that to be able to capture lots of electrons. Um, it's called the emitter because um, it emits uh, the positive flow. Remember, they got conventional current and electron flow uh, back to front. Um, <clears throat> but this is the emitter, and the small one here is just a wire... Um, uh, a probe or just a yeah a thing that's the source of the electrons um, we would call it the collector because it collects the positive charge but it's actually electrons going out of the way in any case <coughs> what what the deal was with this is that you can have light shining on it and uh, knocking loose um, oh, if I get this around the right way um, <laughs> knocking loose electrons <clears throat> in fact the light's shining on, on this part and knocking loose the electrons um, and the electrons jump across um, in, into the into the collector um, and sorry the emitter see it's back to front because they got that um, conventional current electron flow back to front but in any case um, 
the uh, electrons are jumped out with a certain amount of um, energy according to the um, light that's coming in and there were some expectations based on uh, based on that and um, they were totally overthrown. Anyway, here's a dot circuit diagram to the right here um, which gives you uh, a sort of a top view um, and how they measured what was going on was they'd use an ammeter a very sensitive ammeter, probably a micro ammeter to measure very very small current flow and remember the conventional current is going around the circuit this way but that just means that the electrons are going the other way so um, light again shining uh, shining into the photo cell <laughs> aiming at the, um, the the collector of positive charge and um, and, and electrons get jumped out because according to the light but anyway let's let's just look at some of the things that they expected to happen um, and uh, yeah and what really happened so what was expected um, they thought a brighter light um, would give more uh, kinetic energy to the electrons emitted uh, more Let's just write more and then kinetic energy uh, one by one rather than together. So expected they expected brighter um, light um, would give more kinetic energy to electrons. So that was one thing. Okay. Um, another thing um, was that uh, they thought dim light, dim light would take um, time, so more time to build up energy. To build up enough kinetic enough energy, enough kinetic energy um, for electrons to escape and be detected in the in the um, in the ammeter. And then um, one other final thing, um, they considered that the frequency of the light wouldn't wouldn't uh, affect the energy of the emitted electrons. Um, no effect on EK on the kinetic energy and I guess current flow is a good measure of um, the energy of the electrons um, <coughs> the greater the current flow the more um, is flying makes sense okay so let's bring that over there what did they really see happen Okay, so so that was what was expected, and then when they did the experiment, so the hypothesis, this is the um, scientific, um, you know, scientific method in, in action. Um, you have a hypothesis and you test it. Um, what actually happened was that um, brighter light um, didn't affect the energy of electrons. So bright light left EK the same, kinetic energy the same but in, but what did happen was more of them more electrons emitted is there two M's in emit? anyway, emitted, let's just put a lot of squiggles there so it looks like emitted um, so brighter light um, made more electrons emit um, and the second observation they're expecting dim light taking more time to build up um, even the faintest light um, faint light still made electrons jump off. So very, very, very faint light. Didn't need to take any time at all to build up energy to get free. Um, faint light came off. They had to do this with UV um, light, particular particular wavelength of light, which gets down to the next point. That um, what they found was as the as the frequency increased um, so did the energy kinetic energy of the electrons so they found that the frequency is proportional to the uh, to the energy of the kinetic energy it's absolutely incredible N unheard of and this may not seem quite as exciting uh, now as it did then because we take a lot of this for granted with our models of uh, light and our models of um, uh, of matter, but um, what all of this meant was that uh, light had a, had specific energy levels, um, and and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just crazy. So one one observation 
that needs just a wee bit more um, talk is that um, they, 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 what had the most profound effect on the energy um, was actually the frequency um, and, and that uh, yeah if, you, if your frequency um, and instead of taking time to build up at a certain thing your frequency had to be over a certain level before it would escape um, the metal, the electrons would escape the metal and current would flow and um, you've got to understand that they, this idea of um, light as a wave um, was uh, it just didn't match up with these these ideas. They thought waves of energy would radiate in gradually, not um, what we'd call discrete or particular amounts of energy coming in and instantaneously um, according to uh, the frequency of the light. And it, it turned out that the frequency, I'll just give you this formula because it's useful, was related like this, E equals HF, H being a constant, which is Planck's constant, um, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds, and the units come from the energy and the frequency, you can work that through yourself. Um, but the biggie was, we, they had this idea of light as a particle, so um, instead of being a wave, we came up with this idea of light as a particle. Okay, and photons. So photons, you, you've, I'm sure you've heard of photons. It's, it's become normal to talk about photons of light. Um, and they're not the same as little dust motes of light that you see when you look at a light beam coming through uh, a dusty room. <laughs> you can't see photons. Okay, they're way, way too small. You can see a whole lot of them collectively, or, or you can see um, uh, how they interact with your uh, light-sensitive parts of your eyeballs. But uh, photons themselves, um, they cause the reaction which help you to see, but you, don't, you can't see them individually. They're like electrons. Um, yeah, very small. So anyway, getting, getting back to how this works, if we reconsider our three observations, um, the reason why brighter light didn't um, affect the kinetic energy but produced more electrons is because you've got more photons coming in and the photons give energy to the electrons according to and, and knock them out um, of, of their position, of the energy level. So there's energy levels and get photons of the right energy that are large enough that electrons will be able to escape. So that's, that's what was going on there. Um, and that doesn't make sense under uh, this wave idea, um, but it does make sense under the particle idea. Um, the idea that dim light would take more time to build up, so your, your waves would gradually increase the amount of energy until they, the electrons um, had enough kinetic energy to move off. But what they found was that um, from, from this, the, the kinetic energy was related to the frequency, and um, so I'm joining the bottom two here, and as the frequency rose up to give enough energy, a single photon, even the dimmest of light, of the right frequency would be enough to get that electron to jump up and escape. Um, so, uh, yeah, and that a higher and brighter intensity of light was really just like shining more, um, more photons. They draw photons like this to sort of show particle wave thing. Um, and it just means more of them, which means more electrons, not electrons having twice as much kinetic energy if there's twice as much photons coming in or anything like that. Um, and then a great interesting thing came about was this, uh, this whole wave um, and particle duality of light, which uh, I'll get into in a subsequent video because it's very interesting.